artist David Coles joins me in the spotlight today. He's a Rochester native, the son of RIT faculty member and creative artist here in town. And he's made a career bringing his art to worldwide media outlets you would all recognize. And it's great to talk to you today. Very good to meet you, David. So thank you so much for coming in. Nice to meet you as well. Happy to be here. Yeah, and so it's such an exciting uh, career to have and, and uh, you know, something that people would recognize in their daily life. And tell us a little bit about your life and your, and your work here. Well, um, I mean, as you mentioned, my father was a, a ceramics professor at RIT. Um, so I kind of, I grew up around art. My mom used to actually manage, um, there was a, a store in downtown Rochester called Shop One that sold a lot of the RIT professor's uh, works. So, you know, it, it was kind of the family business growing up. Um, and so then I just, you know, I kind of mostly knew I was headed in that direction. And then my job, I worked at the Democrat and Chronicle for uh, probably about 10 years, maybe altogether. So that was sort of my first art job. Mm -hmm. And from that, I kind of expanded out into doing uh, freelance work for uh, different newspapers and magazines around the country and world. And, and then uh, fairly, well, not that recently anymore, around 2000 or so, I started uh, working on animated stuff. And that's, that's kind of a lot of what I'm doing now is animation work. And so uh, I think people would recognize many of the caricatures you've done, and that's a very specialized field caricature. I hope they do, yeah, yeah. And the, uh, yeah, I mean, that kind of stems back from, you know, my childhood and reading Mad Magazine, you know, was, was a big influence on me. And, you know, artists like Mort Drucker, you know, was in there and I loved his caricature stuff. And yeah. early on, that's sort of what the direction I took in, you know, in terms of caricature was was sort of that his look to things. Um, and then when I got a job at the newspaper, they uh, they asked if I do caricatures. You know, they had to have one of Jimmy Carter, I think it was, to show you how far back it was. <laughs> um, and I said, yeah, yeah, I can do caricatures. Um, and it what happened at that point, I was kind of doing like a kind of a cross hatching, kind of like a lot of detailed kind of illustrations that would take kind of a long time. And once I saw how that printed in the newspaper, um, you know, where I'll, most of the lines either dropped out or filled in, I was like, all right, I got to find a different approach to this. Yeah. And so that's when I sort of started simplifying my work and going more in sort of a cubist direction, like Hirschfeld, say, or a friend of mine had shown me the work of uh, Miguel Covarrubias, which was a, a huge influence on me. And that 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 sort of took me off in that direction. And then I, I started getting work um, doing those, uh, including uh, a weekly one for Entertainment Weekly for about 15 years. Well, it's exciting to see a caricature, a good one, because it captures the essential character of a, of a person in a very few strokes and some basic colors, it seems like. Yeah, I mean, it's tricky. I mean, it, I will say that most of them you know, I, I was doing it long enough that most of them come together fairly quickly. Uh -huh. um, but I will also say that a lot of times when I was painting them, uh, it kind of looked like garbage until like the very end, something <laughs> would kind of snap and then be like, okay, that looks like something. <laughs> but, you know, it is sort of learning what to pay attention to and what to ignore in a person's features kind of. You know, it, it, it definitely helps to know the personality of, of the person I'm drawing, you know, especially with celebrities and musicians and things like that. You sort of know what you want to kind of focus on. Mm -hmm. But I mean, the other thing I learned when I started working in this style, this kind of cubist style, was I had to kind of approach a person's faces almost like a design assignment. Um, because I found like if I liked the person I was drawing too much, or if I disliked them too much, it would sort of, I would kind of end up somewhere in the middle and kind of wishy-washy because I was too aware of, you know, my, my feelings about them. Mm -hmm. So I had to sort of approach it a little more clinically. And usually the feelings kind of came through anyway in the finished piece. You would sort of, you know, you could tell if I liked them or not, sort of. Um, but that also sort of helped me even the, the playing field in terms of how I drew people. Like there was, you know, I drew everyone the same. It was, I was just kind of reacting to the planes of their face and, you know, and the makeup and things like that. And it wasn't, you know, again, there was nothing personal in it. Some people do kind of like mean caricatures. I never, I never did that on purpose. Usually it was just sort of like, I just want to get the person, you know, 
to read is is you know like I say with as few lines as possible. Well, now, um, I pe think people would recognize your character of uh, George Bush, um, the President George Bush. Yep, yep. So um, that was remarkable. And now you said that you paint them. Do you work strictly in physical media, or do you do electronic work as well? Or what's your yeah? Not anymore. Um, painting is fairly rare. Painting is mostly for commissions, or if someone specifically asks for a painting. Um, when I started out, everything you know was painted or, or drawn or, you know, all done analog, basically. Mm -hmm. um, and then I was still new, working at the newspaper when we got our first computers in. And so, and when they first arrived, it was like the Mac classic, you know, and I was like, well, maybe for maps or charts or something like that. Fairly quickly though, I figured out, and they, they improved fairly quickly, you know, the programs they had that I figured out like I could do a lot more with that. And for a long time, it was sort of half and half, half digital and half, you know, actual painting mm -hmm. um, until around the time when I had to start sort of scanning images in to send to them as email attachments to send to the clients uh -huh. was sort of when I was like, I might as well just do this on the computer, save myself a step sort of. So now I'm almost, you know, I'd say like 95% is, is computer stuff. Well, now, uh, when you do a caricature, do you work from life or do you work from images of the person or video of the person? How do you get to know uh, their personality? Very rarely from life. Every now and then I'll do a like a live kind of sketch of somebody. Um, mostly it's finding images on Google. Um, it does help to watch video sometimes, especially if I'm not quite getting it from you know what I'm sketching from the from the still images. Yeah. Sometimes it helps to see them uh, moving around a little bit, and sometimes it also helps me to not pay attention to micro details, you know, and just sort of like get a general impression because they're moving around and stuff. Right. So, but I would say, yeah, I'd say most of it is, is me. In the old days, I would have um, people who would work for me who would go through magazines and tear out images wow. of, of celebrities. And I would have like file cabinets full of alphabetized, you know, everyone has their own folder of, of who the person is. And I would just go look at that. But once sort of Google kicked in in earnest, it was sort of like, so, okay, I'll we'll just go, I'll just Google them, I guess, you know. See, yeah. Well, now, how is caricature different from portraiture? Because you do portraiture as well, I believe. A little bit, a little bit, mostly caricature. I mean, I'm mostly known for caricature, as you say, and that's, you know, that was sort of my entree into the, the uh, you know, the national art world. Oh, I see. Um, I mean, they're very different. I mean, it's, portraiture, do you want to get, generally speaking, a realistic looking portrait of someone, unless you're doing it, you know, let's say they want a portrait of someone, but it's kind of in the style of Picasso or it's in the style of Van Gogh or something like that, you know, then you sort of lean in their direction and those aren't necessarily, you know, strictly realistic. You know, they have, they bring their styles to it. Um, a caricature is all style. I mean, a caricature, you know, like we said earlier, it's, it's, trying to get to the essence of a person yeah. and you know i i would usually pride myself on people not being able to trace the caricature i had done of somebody back to one specific photo because i would work from many photos and sometimes you know it would be oh i, I like you know kind of this profile of his nose but yeah. i like the straight on version of his face so i'll just sort of make his nose go off to the side a little bit uh -huh. you know it you're bringing a lot more to it but in it's in some ways it's it's the most pure if you do it right <laughs> sort of you know yeah. essence of the person's kind of personality and and you know synthesized in your creative process and, and... yeah because you are getting down to just like the bone you know oh, like, you know like you're getting you're, you're cutting through all the the artifice and all the you know everything else and just trying to get right down to, to you know the core of the person well, kids are are especially gifted at seeing the core of an individual. It seems like. Do you do anything for kids? Um, I've done some stuff. I mean, I've done a lot of animated work. I do a lot of um, animated stuff for uh, Sesame Street. I've been working with them for maybe ten years now. I think it's coming up on. Mm -hmm. And I had also done some some kid stuff uh, for They Might Be Giants when they were doing kids albums. I've done some adult stuff for them as well. Um, so, but I haven't, I haven't done any kids books yet. I'd, I'd, I'd like to, but that hasn't, that hasn't quite happened yet. Um, 
but you know every now and then those there's like a kids themed illustration i'll do or something like that but yeah it's uh you know i do what they ask me to do so okay. sometimes it's kids and, and sometimes it's not but i i i love kids well, sometimes great. as uh, you're developing a script for Disney or Sesame Street, they need illustrations along the way. I mean, how, how is it going to look? A storyboard, as it were. Do you do those as well? Right. I do. I do. Yeah. It's, um, and that's mostly what I do with storyboarding. Oh. Uh, you know, most of the stuff that we do for Sesame Street, I work with another animator, um, Jeremy Galante, uh, are the ones where it's about a letter, say, or a, a number or a theme and usually they're sort of like music video versions oh. you know uh, um my daughter allison and her husband um alex cote both are songwriters and musicians and they've always done the music that we use you know for the sesame street ones so but those all start with me doing you know usually they'll come up with a song that we can work with and then i'll do a series of drawings i'll do storyboards which is you know essentially like a comic book version of what the video is going to look like and then we'll run those by sesame street and from that point on then i'll i'll do the character designs you know the more finished versions of them and then then it, you know at some point it gets kind of turned over to the animator who does the real the real leg work on it right well, i think that people would be interested to know how many inputs you have there's music and there's imagery and there's the basic concept to start with and you sort yeah. of build it all together well usually they like sesame street will send us uh like basically a, a request for pitches and uh -huh. they'll tell us what subjects they're looking for. Like uh -huh. what are the, for that season, what are the numbers they're hitting or what are the letters they're hitting or what are the themes they want to cover? Uh, you know, whether it's, uh, you know, like books or, um, you know, counting or fairy tales or, you know, we, we usually we, we kind of have like a starting point like that I see. Um, for everybody to kind of, work on and, and sometimes they don't go through you know we, we've pitched stuff that that didn't make it through but we, we've gotten a fair amount on and i think people would be interested that you've been able to make a career as an independent artist I, that's not necessarily easy it's not it's not i mean it's the the field has changed a lot since when i started out and like i i started working freelance probably 83 or 84 maybe is when i first started getting some freelance work in and at that time I mean, the big change is there were newspapers and, and magazines. Mm -hmm. um, you know, Internet has sort of eaten up some of that, you know, uh, real estate. Yeah. So but back when I was starting out, you know, like it, my career really kind of took off in the in the 90s, probably. But and there were like a ton of magazines where, you know, you could get illustration work in. And, and a I would say probably most of the magazines would at least use illustration of some sort somewhere in the magazine. So. Yeah, de uh, animation has definitely taken over as the dominant thing for me over illustration. I still do illustrations, but it's not, you know, it, it's 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 sort of moved down the list in terms of mostly what I do. Mm -hmm. One of the ways that maybe helped me kind of gain a foothold in the animation industry was that I was coming at it from scratch. So I didn't know any of the sort of rules or stereotype, you know, like I didn't fall for the pitfalls of like, oh, OK, you know, like my stuff looked different, basically, than what they were used to seeing. Well, it's been a um, long and uh, long and uh, successful creative career based right here in Rochester, New York. And so exactly, thank you yeah. so much for telling us about it today. My pleasure. My pleasure. My yep. guest has been Rochester David Hotel. Coles. He's an, a graphic artist and a wonderful creative individual based right here in Rochester, New York, joining me in the spotlight today. Thank you so much for being with us. In the Spotlight is a production of Penfield Television with sponsorship from No Cunnan Associates, a private wealth advisory practice of Ameriprise Financial Advisors. If you enjoy this program, please find us on Facebook, like and share the program, and find our full playlist on YouTube. Thank you so much for watching.